Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast. It's a show filled with family history research strategies and techniques, news and entertainment, and inspiration. And I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Hello and welcome to Genealogy Gems Podcast episode number 244. It's August 2020. And everyone's spending a whole lot more time at home and online. So I think it's the perfect time to dig in to Ancestry.com and talk about strategies that you could use to get the most out of it. Today's show comes from my Elevens is with Lisa YouTube live show. And I sure hope that you've taken some time to check it out over on YouTube. So many of my podcast listeners have told me that they hadn't really thought about sitting down to watch YouTube videos. And my video viewers say the same thing about listening to audio podcasts. However, when they do finally give it a try, they really appreciate what each has to offer. You know, podcasts let you exercise, work around the house, and generally be pretty active while you're listening and you're learning. And the live YouTube show is a great chance to take a midweek break, enjoy a cup of tea, watch the show, and even chat with other genealogists in the live show chat. The video replays, which are over on my website at genealogygems.com slash elevenses, these are great in the evening when there's nothing to watch on TV and you realize, hey, there's a genealogy show to watch. And most importantly, you can first watch it for yourself and you can enjoy the the show's community. And then you can listen again later to pick up what you might have missed or sit down to your computer and give the techniques a try while you listen. Either way, my hope is that you're going to learn something new that's going to help you achieve greater success in your genealogy. So without further ado, let's jump right into my top tips for searching ancestry. One of the things that we notice is that we all have our usual starting place, right? And if we keep looking in the same places, we keep finding the same stuff. So we have to kind of spread out. We have to get kind of get past just using the search and finding more because there is so much more to find on Ancestry.com. And I'm not a hyper expert. I don't work for Ancestry, uh, none of that kind of stuff. But this is just things that I have discovered along my own journey that I think might help you out as well. And of course, when I first started, I did the same thing. You just go to the search uh, under search in the menu and you have all collections, which kind of gives you that universal search box. And that means that you're searching their records, but you're actually not searching all the records. Did you know that? You're not. There's a lot more at Ancestry. And in fact, another usual place that we go to, in addition to the search field, is the family trees. And of course, we look for hints that are on our family trees. But did you know that only 10% of Ancestry records are included in hints? So you might have a lot of hints, but they may not be, you know, the best, the most exciting, the most interesting records. So a great place to start. It's a usual place to start, but certainly not the place to finish. I want to kind of expand things. And one of the places we can expand and find more is in the card catalog. Now I'm guessing, I know you. we have a lot of experienced uh, researchers here on the show, but we have a lot of newbies and a lot of people in between. And at some point, you may have kind of checked out the card catalog, but I'm guessing it might not be kind of a go-to place on a regular basis for you. And I know for a while there, for me, it really wasn't, but I'm finding more and more that it's really becoming another go-to. So you can find it under search in the menu and we just click on card catalog. We kind of go past all the, the standard topics that we had there, like the census and the birth and marriage and death. And when we get to the card catalog, this is truly the one place where you can actually get access to anything and everything that Ancestry has. If you think about it, there, there really isn't any other place on the website to do that but here. Because whether 
um, things are indexed or not, whether they're browse only, whether or not they're included in hints, all of it is listed in the card catalog. That's what makes it so valuable. What kinds of stuff could you find? What are we gonna see, Lisa, that we're not seeing in the other things that we're doing? Well, these are just a couple of examples. How about old maps? Lots of old maps at Ancestry. Also county histories, regional histories, not just for the US, uh, postcards. If you subscribe to my newsletter, then you have seen the, I think it was about two weeks ago, I did an email uh, newsletter about postcards that I had found and been searching at Ancestry, which really got me on this topic, thinking about this. And it was so fun to find postcards that kind of illustrated this family history that I have been developing and working on for so many years. So lots of hidden treasures. Let's take a look at a couple of them. And along the way, we're gonna talk about some of the ways that you can search maybe vary up your searches and some quick tips. For maps, if we go on the card catalog and we look down on the left-hand side, you're gonna see those topics, right? So they have some topics where they have lots of records and it kind of helps prompt you a little bit about what the possibilities are. You can certainly just search in the title or the keywords, but I'm gonna click on maps and here, here's just one example of one of the collections that they have in this map collection, the U.S. Indexed County Land Ownership Maps. And they span all the way from 1860 to 1918, nearly 7 million records um, extracted from about 1,200 maps. So it's a nice size collection. Best part, it includes some of the property owner's names, might be your ancestor, uh, indicates the township and the county boundaries. It can include photos of county officers, landholders, and some buildings and homes. So this is really that social history of the area where your family lived. And that's just one collection. When we look at this collection, if we access it through the card catalog, there is a search field, and that's great. Um, you can go straight in and try and do names and, and places and keywords. But over on the right hand side, take a look when you're particularly when you're looking at items that are in the card catalog. That right hand column is actually going to have some additional prompts for you that vary depending on the collection. So some collections will have them, some won't. There's lots of different variations. But in this case, they have a drop down menu where you can right out of the gate, go down and select the state. And then you can just browse. It may be that there's just a couple of options. And so that's kind of a nice way to go about it, particularly if you do run a search and nothing comes up right out of the gate. There's no low hanging fruit there. Then go and do a browse by state. And here's the kind of maps you can find. So uh, this one is uh, a county in Ohio and very detailed, has names of owners on these properties. So that's really cool. And I love the film strip, of course, because you can see those drawings and photos and other types of content that you're gonna find within the book. So you might find the one map you're looking for, but if we start kind of browsing on either end, we may find a lot of other gems as well. As we're looking through the card catalog and we're digging into individual collections, I want to encourage you to use multiple approaches. It's easy to kind of, we have a focus on what we're looking for. And so we know how we talk about that, but sometimes it's going to be recorded in a different way. I've interviewed so many different product managers for Ancestry and MyHeritage and uh, Family Search, and it's really interesting to hear how the collections are collected, how they're, you know, they get access to them. Then they have to go through the whole process of getting them indexed. And we know that the indexers could be volunteers, they could be paid employees, they could be English speaking or non-English speaking. There's a lot of different people working and the collection can be indexed over time. So when you throw humans into the mix, you can end up with some real variables. And that can give us the false impression when we go to do a search that what we want isn't there but it's those variables that we wanna look for. If I was gonna be in the card catalog and I filtered down to maps, in the title, I'm gonna put Virginia map. There's no Virginia maps, what a bummer. 
Well, we don't want to stop there, right? So I'm going to go back and try it again. And without filtering, if you put Virginia map in the title, you got Virginia Valley records. Okay, so this is not overall an emphasis as a map collection. But the little search that we did, grab that word map out of the end of the title. So with map. So when you click through here, and, and this is a really good reminder because I teach on using Google Books all the time. And we think of Google Books as looking for text, but it's amazing how you'll find these special maps or photos or images or drawings or other kinds of graphics that are not the emphasis of the book, but they're unique. They're the only place you can find this item. Same thing when we're searching through these uh, treasures that we're finding in the card catalog that are not popping up in our regular searches. This collection may have that one really unique map that's going to make all the difference. So it's really cool to be able to vary up these searches. Let's try a different one. So that got us one. If we go down to keyword search, and we again filter down just to maps, if we put in Virginia map, now we're getting three. And it's interesting, of course, Virginia doesn't even appear in the title. But what this is telling us is these three collections have something in the collection that refers to a map of Virginia. So three results there. This was interesting to me. If you just put Virginia in the title, but you filter down to maps, you don't get anything. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I do these searches, I find there's some real inconsistencies. So I don't know if that's the algorithm, if that's just the search engine itself, but we have to assume it's not perfect, okay? It probably never is. They probably always have programmers that are working on it. I don't know. But we want to take into account that there may be some imperfections, both technologically and, of course, the human element. I just put in the word Virginia. I did a filter down from maps, atlases, and gazetteers, and now I get 10 results. So clicking through, I can learn more about each collection, get a feel for whether I think it's really going to have what I want, search within it, that kind of thing. So lots of different options, more than three searches that I ran, and many different types of results. If we don't search for any words, and, and I would encourage you to do this sometimes, particularly if, if you really need something and you're just not finding it through your keyword search. We don't know if we're really using the right terminology that the indexer used, right? So how about just using the filters? If I use the filter for maps, atlases, and gazetteers, filter it down to USA and then to Virginia, I did get seven results. So they're saying that within these seven collections, we may very well find something that taps into the state of Virginia. I know we all love maps. I love maps because I, you know, we did the Google Earth session and wow, that was a popular episode of this show. And I hope you guys go check it out. You find old maps, you can bring these into Google Earth. So there's a lot of, and it just kind of build them into your family story right there in Google Earth. Um, let's talk about county histories. So lots of county histories in the card catalog. Here's an example of one of the collections that I found, the U.S. County and Regional Histories and Atlases, 1804 to 1984. It's a pretty big collection, more than 2,200 volumes of county and regional histories and lots of different states included. And you got to love these because I just love the, the pictures and um, so much of the information that they have that was so unique just to that time, kind of gives you that snapshot in time. Postcards, that's another one. Now, as I talked about in the, in the newsletter, I kind of featured this. I wanted to show you a quick postcard search in the card catalog. Now, logically, and, and this is interesting, I ran this search the other day, so I clicked on pictures and nothing came up. And then I did it again to prepare this and I got titles with postcards. So it just goes to prove who knows what's being changed on a regular basis. If you ran something in a couple of weeks ago and it just didn't find anything and you really need that something, you might want to go back and try it again. So I filtered down to pictures. And when we do a search, we see we get like 40 results over two pages. Now I'm all about, I don't have enough time to get everything done that I want to do. So how can we speed this up? 
I love using the uh, find on page little hotkeys. If you haven't, don't do that regularly, you should. It saves you a lot of time. It adds up. So on my keyboard, I do control and F. I believe on a Mac, although I don't have a Mac, I think it's command and F. And that's going to pop up that little find box that you find at the top of the page. There is a special little search box. So I can put in the word postcard and it jumped down and it highlighted for me each collection that had the word postcard in the name. So that makes it really fast. You can scan through and look. I don't have to read all the titles. I can just grab the ones I want, open them up. Um, a fun little tip is if you right click on any of these and you open in a new window. And what that does is it lets you look at each one and evaluate before you lose them and you're not going back and forth, back and forth. You can close those tabs as you go. So lots of uh, postcard collections here, 10 results over two pages of, of results. So here's what's interesting. In the card catalog, if you do a search on the word postcard in a title, the title of the collection, we know that there were collections with that title. I got zero results. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's, you know, it's technology. And so it may not be perfect. So if I had run that, I would have gone, well, there's no postcard collections here and just given up. No. So let's try it again. How about postcards with an S? 10 results, the same 10 we got the other way. So it looks to me, if you look at these titles, they're all postcards, plural. To, and keep this in mind, Ancestry search engine did not pick up on the singular version of the word. Even though that word is contained, postcard is contained within postcards, it didn't grab it. Remember singular and plural as you're doing your searches. Uh, postcards, great. I got 10 from all over the world. Love it, love it, love it. If I go in the keyword field and I just do the word postcard, then I get one result. And it's not in the title because we're not searching titles. So it's somewhere in the description of this. And again, the other 10 didn't show up, which you would think that they might show up as having the word postcard in the description, but they were using the plural version and it's not picking it up. It's good to know. Okay, so postcards, plural, in the keyword field, that got our 10 results. It worked both for the title and for keywords. I love these collections. Uh, it's really interesting. Many of them have both sides of the postcard, which you could find some interesting little stories that have been written on the back of the cards. I went through and uh, Bill's grandfather, when he immigrated, and I told this story in the newsletter, um, he immigrated in 1912. And he went to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And he ended up getting his first job was like installing light bulbs on the outside of the city hall. And he, he tells a story of them literally hanging him out the window by his feet to be able to reach where he needed to install these. And then when he got them all done, uh, I think it was the mayor came along and said, yeah, I, I think I want a different color. <laughs> Can you imagine? He didn't stick with that, that job very long really fun to be able to get images of the places that he talked about in this little autobiography that he wrote. Here's one you probably didn't know about, World War II newsreels. These are films at Ancestry. So I did a search on Aleutian Island and it brought up this. Now I looked for this because uh, Bill's father served in the Aleutian Islands during World War II. You can make it full size. United States troops close in on the cold, barren island of Amchitka in the Illusions. A it's pretty cool the bombing to the see it. Of Kiska, I mean, to see it in moving away. pictures, just to envision him being there. Down at the bottom, you'll see those three little dots. You can do picture in picture. So if you want to go back and read more about this collection while you're watching, you can do picture in picture. But interesting, the word Illusion got me one result. If I go back and just put an S on the end of islands, let's try it again. Six. So yes, there was a video. I was thrilled. 
but I'm more thrilled to get six, okay? The more the better. Look at the bottom. Sometimes you see this little shortcuts, and I don't know, I ignore it a lot too, but we're gonna talk about shortcuts. I call them kind of hot keys because they are a time saver as well. And there are more than even what Ancestry tells you about right there. So we'll dig into hotkeys right after this. Today's episode is sponsored by MyHeritage, a global discovery platform enjoyed by 110 million people worldwide. MyHeritage has it all and offers a full-service experience that bridges your past, present, and future. The MyHeritage DNA Kit reveals your ethnic origins and finds your new relatives based on shared DNA. It's popular all over the world, and their constantly growing DNA database means that more matches to new relatives are just around the corner. You'll receive a percentage breakdown of your ethnic origins from 42 supported regions and weekly email updates as new DNA matches are found. It's also the leading DNA service for anyone with European origins. Make the most of your DNA results with a MyHeritage subscription and access advanced tools for genetic genealogy, like the theory of family relativity, autoclusters, shared ancestral places, and much more. Order your kit today at myheritage.com slash DNA. Already taken a DNA test with another service? Upload your DNA data to MyHeritage for free to receive DNA matches and access new discoveries. That's myheritage.com slash DNA. If there's one project that's been hanging over me the last few years, it's been getting all my old home movies digitized. It was really daunting because they're in so many different formats. I had Hi8, Mini DV, VHS, and even 8mm reels. I met the folks from Larson Digital at a genealogy conference a couple years ago, and they have really saved the day. They're awesome to work with, and they could take it all. So I was a little nervous about shipping my stuff out. You might be nervous about that too. I, I put half my stuff in a box, and I FedExed it to them. And they got it the next day, and... Before I knew it, that exciting email arrived saying, here's all your old home movies in an MP4 digital format. That means now I can work with them, turn them into little videos for social media, longer videos for family get togethers, and I I can cut out all the times that I stuck my hand in front of the lens. Soon after that, the DVDs arrived in the mail and everything looked better than it had before. So I just shipped out the other half of my tapes, and I can't wait to see the movies that I haven't seen in decades. Do it now. Get your old home movies digitized. Here at Genealogy Gems and on my YouTube channel, I'll show you how to turn them into projects that will touch your family's heart, but you've got to get them digitized. Visit larsendigital.com Lisa. Larson is with an E, L-A-R-S-E-N, digital.com Lisa. That's the page where you're going to find exclusive discounts just for you. Tell them that you're sending them your precious memories because you heard about it on Genealogy Gems and they will take really good care of you. Visit LarsonDigital.com slash Lisa. You can speed up your search when you're searching at Ancestry with hotkeys. So I'm going to show you two. One is going to be able to very quickly refine your search and one will give you a new search. So rather than running a search and going and grabbing your mouse and then trying to find the right spot and you click it again and you try to start over again, you can do it right from your keyboard. So here I have a search for postcards and I'm going to click the Australian collection. And I run a search and I type in, okay, well, I want Sydney and I pick from the drop down menu that it's in um, New South Wales, click my search. Now, after I run that, I think, oh, well, there's nothing there. But if I click R on my keyboard, it pops that box right back up and I can go back and check is there, are there any uh, items from Melbourne and run it again. Or I can go back and go down to the keyword and just put in the word Sydney and see if I get something else. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got lots of uh, historical postcards. If I press N on my keyboard, I can go back and do that brand new search. So let's start over again, clear the slate. I get a nice clear search box right from the start and I can put in a new term and find more. 
it's interesting that the keyword searches were so much more effective than the title. So I'm going to have all these hotkeys for you in the show notes so that you can use these on a regular basis. It's just a little faster. It's just a little faster. You can also navigate records quickly with hotkeys. And that is very helpful. Again, not grabbing your mouse, being able just to hit something on the keyboard and be able to jump around. We can page back as we're looking at records. Let's go to a census record. We have that film strip at the bottom. If we press a key on our keyboard, P, and I think of it as past, the past record, P on our keyboard will jump and go back through the film strip. You don't even have to grab your mouse. So that's very handy and very quick, actually. It's interesting that the uh, website responds so quickly to the quick keys. So P, think of P as past the past item that we looked at or that's in that film strip. You can also move forward through a film strip. So if we do N on our keyboard, it will jump through. And of course, when you're looking at the census, that's really important, isn't it? So you find the page where your ancestors are and you get all the stuff that you need. We need to be looking at those pages prior and the pages after because who knows, who we will find, chances are, our family lived near other family. It's interesting, I have gotten to the point now where I'm even spotting names who were witnesses on baptisms and best friends at work and all these things and spotting those names in the census. So it's really nice to have that handy little P for past, N for next going forward and being able to quickly jump through particularly census pages. If the film strip is in your way and you'd like a little more space to see what you're looking at, if you press F on your keyboard, it will pop that film strip out. It toggles, so it'll go back and forth. And that's really handy versus going and searching for that little X in the upper right-hand corner of that film strip and trying to shut it down. You can just press F, think F for film strip, and it will give you just a little more real estate to be able to look at the record that you're working on. I love these. All right. so. Navigating, how about the side panel? I have talked to so many people who didn't even know the side panel was there. And we're gonna use quick keys to access it. It just gives you more information about the records that you're looking at. I really encourage you, gosh, when you're looking at a record collection, it's exciting to find the record that you wanted, but take a moment to familiarize yourself with the collection. As you read things like the description and the source citation, it may bring to mind other things in terms of what you wouldn't expect to find and a new idea for something else that you could find because of what the description and the source are saying is contained within this record. Let me show you how this works. So if you're looking at a record and you press R, it pops up this side panel and you can see related records. So if you know that this is a good one, they're saying, well, we found Conover in a lot of other records as well. These don't toggle. So it, it's funny, there's just kind of no rhyme or reason to it. Um, but uh, some of the quick keys will toggle what you're doing, some will not. So you can't close the side panel back up by pressing R again, at least when, as I did it last night. But I love this related records because this is that kind of, if you like this, you're gonna love that kind of breadcrumb trail. So, and a lot of these are Conover Burkett, my great, great grandfather. So R is gonna give us the related and you can see by looking at that side panel that there's actually kind of like three little tabs, detail, related and source. This is revealing just the related information. If we click I on our keyboard, we see an index. So you know how it highlights what you're looking at on the record? If there's an index available, you'll be able to scroll through it at the bottom. And I, I really like just using the eye. And you can see at the very left hand side of the index at the very top, it tells you this is the index. So that works really slick and it does toggle. So mostly the stuff on the side panel does not toggle back and forth, but things like the film strip, the index, those you can turn on and off as you need them so fast. There's also details in that side panel. 
So if we press D for details, so these are the details of the person that we searched for within this record. It tells us very quickly what family number, what dwelling number, household number. So if you're having trouble even finding where you're looking, although they do highlight it for you, you can look over there and find those details as well. It also tells you other people who were in the record who are related to that person. So uh, details, very cool. Again, doesn't toggle, but you can just press the X to close that. S will show you the source. You got to get the source citation for the record that you found. And again, that's that third little tab on the right hand side within the side panel. But here's the source citation and the source description. So there's information here that we really need to be familiar with, particularly if we're saying, I trust this record, this is the right one, you know, do your homework and make sure you understand what else might be included in the database, what may not be included in it, and get that source citation into your genealogy software. You can literally just use your mouse and highlight the information, copy it and paste it into a source citation. So you gotta love the hotkeys, they're very quick, very effective, but there are more. So you can quickly move through a results list. Now this doesn't work on everything, but when you have a list, you can go J or K, or you can also press enter on your keyboard and that will open the one that you've highlighted. So J and K will help you move up and down and you'll just have to think of words to associate with J and K to help remind you that what they do, but they go up and down a list like that. Um, I've tried this on different lists. Sometimes it, it works, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. But that type of list where you saw lots of different items, uh, it does pretty well. And then just enter. You don't even have to find your mouse. Navigate to the one that you want, to that line that you want and press enter. And you can use all of these tips in other great collections. Here's the Sears Roebuck catalog. And there's lots of these catalogs in the card catalog. So much fun to look at these. I have found items that I wasn't sure what they were. Okay, so press S for source. We can do that. We can do R for related. We can do the D on our keyboard for details. Just hopping around, learning more about what we're looking at. Remember our... P for past in the film strip and our N for next to move forward in the film strip. But if we want to get that film strip out of the way, F, film strip F, and that gives us just a little more viewing room. And of course you can jump if you want to. This is, if there's 1300 pages, you can just do some quick browsing and put any number in that search box, in that little box, the film strip box, and it will jump to that page in the collection. So way faster than trying to navigate your way either way, use the little box and put in um, a much bigger number, much smaller number, it'll jump you around the collection really quickly. So I love how there are just little hidden treasures, we just have to remind ourselves that they're there and take advantage of them because they can make the time that we spend so much more effective. You're investing money, that's important. So what did we talk about? Using the card catalog. That's just gonna be another one of your go-to, right? We've got the search box, we've got the hints. Make that card catalog a place that you go on a regular basis because only 10% of records are captured in hints. Understanding search, okay? So it's a real eye-opener to run some of these searches and realize what I would expect to have happen, maybe it didn't happen. And it's not that it's broken, in fact, it's interesting, after I ran the newsletter article about the postcard search, I was showing how to do that and some of the things I found and somebody emailed me and they said, Oh, well, I ran a search for London, England, and I got nothing. And then I ran it in the keywords and I got some and a few and there's not much there. It looks like it doesn't work. And it was interesting. When I got the email, I ran the same search as she talked about. And I found that we needed to vary some of the, the terms that we were using, maybe just the word London, not London, England. And then we got, it was weird. You got all kinds of results. So I wrote her back and I said, well, it works, but we just have to vary it, keeping in mind who's indexing and the fact that different people index at different times. So I was going to include that in this presentation. I went back to run them again. It's behaving totally differently. <laughs> <laughs> and it's showing way more results. So either that's a fluke, 
I happened to catch it before, well, before they were going to work on it or somebody in Ancestry saw it and then fixed it. I don't know. But what it reminds us is, is that it's our job to be the one to be flexible, to try the different variations and to come back to it. Don't be discouraged. Come back to it. If there's really something that you've got your heart set on finding, it might pop up the next time you do it. So understanding that there are variables, exploring those unique collections. I just touched on a couple of them. There are so many, there's passport collections and there's different immigration collections. I mean, catalogs, postcards, everything. It's really, really interesting to see the diverse amount of content that Ancestry has deep in that card catalog and the hotkeys. I hope that speeds things up for you. So that's my top tips. Hopefully you heard something new. I know I learned something new in just putting this together for you. And certainly Ancestry is one of those go-to places. If you don't currently use Ancestry and you're thinking about it, I have a link in the show notes, of course. When you use our links, we always appreciate that you um, are supporting us and the show. But that's my only affiliation and that I went and got myself an affiliate link for Ancestry. I don't work for them or anything else, but we love when we can find records. Have you visited backblaze.com slash Lisa yet? If you don't have cloud backup for your computer yet, everything on it is vulnerable to loss. Your pictures, your master genealogy database, files for work, the everyday business of your household, losing all of that at once is as devastating as it sounds. That's why I did my homework and I found a cloud-based backup service provider. I chose Backblaze. It runs in the background 24-7 automatically saving copies of everything, including my precious video files. Did you know that some of the other leading services actually skip your video files when they do the backup? Hello, not good. And Backblaze is so easy to use. I love their free app that allows me to access all my files if I need to from my smartphone or my tablet. Most importantly, the service is totally affordable for real people. It's just $5 a month. So don't wait to ensure that all your files are safe. Do it now. Back them up like I do with Backblaze. Head over to backblaze.com slash Lisa and get that $5 a month deal. Check it out for yourself. You could even do a free trial. That's backblaze.com slash Lisa. Profile America, Sunday, August 23rd. Often unmentionable and little regarded, a 130-year-old American invention enjoyed, if that's the word, considerable attention earlier this year. In 1890, toilet paper on a dispensing roll was patented by the founder of today's Scott brand of paper products. Toilet paper itself dates back about 1,500 years to China, but didn't develop until the mid-19th century. Some perforated and medicated versions were available in America before the Scott product, but weren't successful. In spite of demand-driven shortages, America is on a roll when it comes to stocking this species of sanitary paper. Nationwide, there are 132 establishments producing sanitary paper products. These operations employ over 17,000 people in the $13 billion enterprise. Profile America is in its 24th year as a public service of the U.S. Census Bureau. Well, we've come to the end of another episode. This has been episode number 244, and I hope you picked up on some tips that you're excited about trying over at Ancestry.com. As always, I love hearing from you. So send me an email. Let me know uh, what you liked, what questions you have. You can do that at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. You can also call me on the voicemail line, leave a voicemail, 925-272-4021. And of course, we have a show notes page. So if you head to genealogygems.com, under podcast in the menu, go to the Genealogy Gems podcast. Click episode 244. There you'll find the show notes. You'll find the link to more notes over on the 11s is with Lisa episode page I told you about. And at the bottom of the page, there's a comment section. That's for you. That's where I want to hear from you. So do leave me a comment. Let me know. What did you find? What questions do you have about what you heard? 
I want to hear from you. So that's your opportunity to do that down there at the comments at the bottom of the show notes page. And finally, I know that many of you follow me on Facebook and on Instagram, and uh, I shared not too long ago a photograph of Howie, our dog. He was uh, lying on the floor next to my desk. He's here for every podcast recording since the very beginning. Uh, We got Howie in 2005. Of course, I started the show in 2007. He's been here every step of the way. Tried to crawl my suitcase a couple times to come to (laughs) the genealogy conferences. But recently, uh, he had taken a turn for the worse. And unfortunately, this last weekend, Howie passed away. Joined our dear Coda up in heaven. We've lost two of our fur babies this year. And um, that's, that's never easy, but we certainly count our blessings that we had him for 15 years. So this episode is dedicated to our dear sweet Howie. I hope that you're uh, giving your loved ones and your fur babies, if you have them, a big hug. Thank you so much for listening, friend. I'll talk to you soon.